Hey everybody, welcome on back. Let's talk about numbers. Values of the number type are unsurprisingly numeric values. In a JavaScript program, they're written as follows. 13. Excellent. Use that in a program, and it will cause the bit pattern for the number 13 to come into existence inside the computer's memory. JavaScript uses a fixed number of bits, 64 of them, to store a single number value. There are only so many patterns you can make with 64 bits, which means that the number of different numbers that can be represented is limited. With n decimal digits, you can represent 10 to the n numbers. Similarly, given 64 binary digits, you can represent 2 to the 64th power different numbers, which is about 18 quintillion, and 18 with 18 zeros after it. That's a lot. Thank you for that. Uh, computer memory used to be much smaller, and people tended to use groups of 8 or 16 bits to represent their numbers. It was easy to accidentally overflow such small numbers, to end up with a number that did not fit into the given number of bits. Today, even computers that fit in your pocket have plenty of memory, so you are free to use 64-bit chunks, and you need to worry about overflow only with dealing with truly astronomical numbers. Not all whole numbers less than 18 quintillion fit in a JavaScript number, though. Those bits, are, those bits also store negative numbers, so one bit indicates the sign of the number. The bigger issue is that non-whole numbers must also be represented. To do this, some of the bits are used to store the position of the decimal point. The actual maximum whole number that can be stored is more in the range of 9 quadrillion, 15 zeros, which is still pleasantly huge. Fractional numbers are written by using a dot. So we have 13 before, now we have 9.81. For very big or very small numbers, you can also use scientific notation, notation by adding an E for exponent, followed by the exponent of the number. I actually didn't know this. It's pretty cool. This essentially means 2.98 times 10 to the 8th, which is, of course, written right here. I, just, I didn't know you could write that as just straight E. Calculations with whole numbers, also called integers, smaller than the aforementioned 9 quadrillion, are guaranteed to always be precise. Unfortunately, calculations with fractional numbers are generally not. Just as pi cannot be expressed by a finite number of decimal digits, many numbers lose precision when only 64 bits are available to store them. This is a shame, but it causes practical problems only in specific situations. The important thing is to be aware of it and to treat fractional digital numbers as approximations, not precise values. When you hear people complain about JavaScript, this is one of the things they're talking about. Uh, you also may have noticed that if you come across a situation where you're uh, multiplying and dividing a bunch of decimals in a question, you might get an answer that's slightly different than exactly what you thought it would be. But again, we just kind of avoid that when we're working with JavaScript or you get a package or download something. There's definitely a bunch of different ways to get around it. Most of what we're going for at this point is awareness as opposed to expertise in dealing with the situations that we're going to be aware of. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that, let's talk about some arithmetic. The main thing to do with numbers is arithmetic. Arithmetic operations such as addition or multiplication take two number values and produce a new number for them. Here's what they look like in JavaScript. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to copy it using Command C, and I'm going to come over here to my replet. Uh, this is the working vocab list that we have that is already now complete because these are a re-recording of videos that didn't have sound. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're not going to worry about this for right now. We're going to paste in that 100 plus 4 times 11. So theoretically, this could be something like 104 times 11, which I don't know is what like what that is. Probably something like 10,440. It's probably not exactly that, but what we're going to do is figure out the order of operations here and then read about what's going on. So if we run this, the output is going to be 144, which means this happens first, and then we add them together. So we're going to go into that in a second why that happens, but never hurts to run code. Anytime you see these code examples, it's always going to be a good idea to come over here and run it, even if you don't see me do it. So let's go ahead and jump back to the book. And by the way, I'm using Control-Shift-Tab or Control-Tab on a Mac to go between the tabs of my Chrome you know, browser. So there you go. The plus and multiplication symbols are operators. The first stands for addition, and the second stands for multiplication. Uh, putting an operator between two values will apply it to those values and produce a new value. But does the example mean add 4 and 100 and multiply the result by 11, or is the multiplication done before the adding? Well, we kind of figured this out a moment ago. As you might have guessed, the multiplication happens first. But as in mathematics, you can change this by wrapping the addition in parentheses, which I'm going to do because I'm curious what the result of this is going to be. So if we wrap this part in parentheses, it knows that this operation needs to happen before this operation is applied. So if we run this, we're going to get that 10,000, 11,000. Oh, wow, way off. 
1100. Anyway, uh, parentheses. Okay, for subtraction, there is the minus operator. Now, I'm not sure if I should call this the minus or the hyphen operator. I'm going to call it minus because, well, that's what it does, and it'd be weird to keep introducing new names for everything. So, for subtraction, there is the, uh, what did I say, minus operator, and the division can be done with the division operator. That one we're going to refer to as a forward slash, just because it's a good idea to start getting used to the difference between a forward slash and a backslash. If you are curious, a forward slash or a backslash, we name it based on where the top of the slash is pointing if we're going from left to right reading. So if the top of the slash is pointing forward, as it is here, we refer to this as a forward slash. Backslash obviously would be the other one. When operators appear together without parentheses, the order in which they are applied is determined by the precedence of the operators. The example shows that multiplication comes before addition. The forward slash or division operator has the same precedence as the multiplication operator. For plus and minus, oh sorry, likewise for plus and minus. When multiple operators with the same precedence appear next to each other, as in 1 minus 2 plus 1, they are applied left to right. The quantity 1 minus 2, and then the result of that plus 1. These rules of precedence are not something you should worry about. Agreed. When in doubt, just add parentheses. Could not have said it better myself. That is an excellent way for beginner programmers to avoid all of that nonsense is just parenthesize your order of operations and you'll be fine. There's one more arithmetic operator, which you might not immediately recognize. The percent symbol is used to represent the remainder operation. x percentage y, or x mod y, is the remainder of dividing x by y. For example, 314 modulo, or mod, or percentage 100, and the reason that we're saying a bunch of different names for that is because this is the modulo operator, and in math we call this 314 mod 100, but it's a percent symbol as well. So from now on, we are going to say mod when we're looking at this. So 314 mod 100 produces 14, and 144 mod 12 gives 0. The remainder operator's precedence is the same of that of multiplication and division. You'll also often see this operator referred to as modulo. Well, so there you go. Special numbers. There are three special numbers in JavaScript that are considered numbers, but don't behave like normal numbers. The first two are infinity and negative infinity, which represent the positive and negative infinites. Infinity minus one is still infinity, and so on. Don't put too much trust in infinity-based calculation, though. It isn't mathematically sound, and it will quickly lead to the next special number, NAN. NAN stands for not a number, even though it is a value of the number type. You'll get this result, for example, when you try to calculate zero divided by zero, infinity minus infinity, or any number of other numeric operations that don't yield a meaningful result. So that's it for the introduction to numbers. This will, uh, we're gonna go over almost everything that is important that we've gone over so far over and over again. So hang in there, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.